Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So it's officially hit the fan according to the WHO. Why this is so significant, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about why I think that there's something that not many people are thinking about right now, and that's potential food shortages later in the year as a result of this. And I also want to talk about some of the pros and cons of them calling it a pandemic. So I have a video coming out tomorrow that talks all about using ultraviolet light to disinfect your personal protective equipment or just your personal items, your keys, your phone, that kind of thing. So stay tuned for that. But I figured, hey, it's time to do a little bit more prognosticating because everything that we expected to happen has happened, unfortunately. And this is now spread worldwide. Now there's pros and cons to them calling it a pandemic. Initially, there's going to be a big economic shock as a result to all of this. There's going to be that panic because they've called it a pandemic. But ultimately, once we become accustomed to the idea that it is a pandemic, once the markets acquiesce to that notion, then you're going to see that anxiety be relieved. Because what people don't like the most is uncertainty. The market doesn't like uncertainty. Now that we know the shit has hit the fan, believe it or not, in the next few weeks, that might actually help to stabilize things a little bit. However, there's still going to be the lag due to the disruption in the manufacturing, which happened earlier this year in China, and the you know corresponding lag that's going to happen when people report their lower than expected quarterly earnings, far lower than expected. And we're still going to see uh, that trickling down. And we're also going to continually see more quarantines and that's going to have some pretty significant repercussions on the economy throughout North America and Europe and everywhere. But because it's now been declared a pandemic, that also is going to relax some of the potential trade barriers which may have happened during the containment phase. Because now, once you cross that line in calling it a pandemic, countries move towards a strategy of minimizing the harm to their population as opposed to trying to contain it. So, you know, you're going to be back to an open borders situation where people can travel freely from country to country eventually, not right away, of course. If every country in the world or if all the major countries in the world become like Italy, then your country is not going to be able to close the borders to all those because you wouldn't be able to survive. We live in a globalized world. We, in the very least, need trade to be facilitated. So the benefits of calling it a pandemic are ultimately going to be economic ones. Now, the detriment to that, of course, is that it's going to spread because countries are going to become more relaxed in their containment strategies. Instead of committing full-blown economic suicide, countries are going to opt for focusing on treatment and how they can mitigate uh, the cases that are, are popping up. Now, what you're going to also see is China suddenly is going to start to have more cases again. This is my prediction. Because I think they've been holding their breath until this moment. Because now it, that it's global, the attention is going to be off of them. So that's what I think. This is going to spread throughout Canada. They have the Juno Awards, I believe, in Saskatoon. And uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be called off or not. But I think there's going to be a few key events like that which are going to spread this far and wide within Canada here. Even into the untouched Midwestern regions of Canada. It's going to make its way here very shortly. If it's not already here, I'm guessing in the next few days, uh, you're going to see some cases reported in Saskatoon. Okay, so up until this point, we've talked about supply shortages. You know, weeks ago, I made a video about why you need to stock up before the panic. And some people did, lots of people didn't. And it looked like Black Friday all over again. And the interesting comparison that is, isn't it? How maybe Black Friday was like training for the collapse, you know, <laughs> was training for the real thing. People fist fighting over TVs into fist fighting over toilet paper, which baffles me. I'm not sure where that even came from, the idea of toilet paper. I think it was a media perpetuated self-fulfilling prophecy because most people now have more toilet paper than they're going to have food to wipe away. Sorry about the bad visual there, but uh, it's just the truth. Most people now have more toilet paper than they have food in their homes. I laugh, but it's not funny. So spring is around the corner and some people think that bodes well for the virus to lose steam. But as many of you know, you can get a cold in the summer as much as you can get a cold in the winter. Yes, the incidence and the prevalence of it is lesser than 
but it is still going to be around and I don't think it's going to diminish uh, the the prevalence of this as much as people think, especially in the northern climates where it's still going to be cold or, you know, definitely it's, it's not going to be that hot for many months. But spring is around the corner and farmers need to get their crops in the ground. Farmers need pesticides, herbicides, fertilizer, uh, potash. They need a lot of tools in addition to the manpower itself. You need the manpower to get those seeds in the ground. So I foresee potential food shortages. We've been talking about supply shortages. A lot of that is, you know, iPhones and, you know, uh, junk, you know, that you're going to throw away in a few months because you don't really need it in the first place. And toilet paper and, you know, some uh, hygienic stuff. But we haven't quite gotten into food shortages yet. Yes, there have been shortages of canned goods, but you can still go out to a restaurant and eat. You know, the food price hasn't been jacked up that high yet. I'm not sure what the consumer price index is looking like, generally speaking, but I don't think it's it's that much different than it was a few months ago. That's going to change pretty quick, I believe. And then, of course, you're all going to also going to have interruptions in transport and the postal service. So I foresee that we will see a rise in the cost of food or worse, uh, just the absence of certain types of food from the grocery store in the first place. This is an unfortunate reality when you have these sort of economic disruptions. Right now, we're still relying on the surplus of a lot of these companies, but that's going to be coming to an end soon. This is only the beginning of this. Eventually, it's going to hit home. And remember, this can go from zero to 100 in your neck of the woods in a matter of days. All it takes is for them to start finding a few cases and they reach a critical threshold for the amount of cases they find and then they lock it down and then you are trapped in your house with whatever you have, waiting for government assistance. Now, there may be government stimulus packages to offset some of the things that I'm talking about and I certainly think that the priority at some point when when people realize that there may be potential shortages, that is going to be the priority is the agricultural sector, getting those seeds in the ground, getting the crops out of the ground. And this is barring no major climate catastrophes. Chances are we're going to see, see a lot of that this year too. I mean, we could see flooding. We could see drought. There's a lot of things that, you know, we might as well anticipate we're going to see because they've been happening every year for the last few years. Things are going to get very real very quickly and I think we should enjoy this right now. There's a good chance that this could be interrupted at some point. That's the worst case scenario is that at some point we're not able to communicate with each other on here. And I know this might seem like a dire prediction and I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to happen but I'm saying don't be surprised if it does. There may be certain restrictions put on internet communication if they're worried about people spreading misinformation and disinformation. Now, I think that what I'm saying is quite reasonable. I don't think I'm saying anything which is too radical or on the fringe. You know, I, I think that everything we've prognosticated thus far has come true. Sadly, unfortunately, it's come true. But th with these crackdowns and these lockdowns and these quarantines, may come the suspension of some of the liberties and some of the services like this that you've come to enjoy. Practically speaking, what I'm saying is you may see a disruption in services. If the power guy that goes and fixes the power box when there's a problem gets sick, you're not going to have power. There's going to be power outages. Internet service providers, phone lines, uh, heating companies, water, these are all things which you may see disruptions of services in. So make sure you have an ample supply of water. Make sure you have an ample supply of food. I don't like spurring people to go out and spend money they don't have, but I think there's going to come a point where you take a look at your credit cards and you ask yourself whether or not it's worth maxing these out for food. Not for TV sets, not for shit you don't need, but for actual supplies. There may come a time. I'm not saying you should do that because I'm not a financial advisor and I don't want anybody making any hasty decisions that they're going to have to live with because you're going to have to pay that money back. I'm just saying that for some of you, there may come a time when you are faced with that decision. Do I go out, max out my credit cards and buy food while I can or stay hungry but debt free for three months? Anyways, guys, I, I do hope that 
the tide on this turns because it's starting to take a toll on a lot of people mentally, physically, financially. We're in ruin right now. We are going, we're not going into a recession. We are in a recession. I seen an article headline today that made me laugh as much as I was crying inside. And it said that we may be seeing an end to the bull market. The Dow Jones is down almost 7,000 points. I don't know what that translates percentage-wise, but it's got to be 25, 30% since it, from its high a few months ago. And they're still talking about how the bull market might be over. You know, I understand the reasoning behind the WHO. I understand that, and you guys should understand it too. This is what they were trying to postpone. They were also trying to give people hope for containment. You can hate on them as much as you want, but you know, I've I've been on the front lines working and I've been in management also, and when you look at things from management, it's always different. So, we are all down here saying, "Oh, the WHO, why aren't they calling it a pandemic?" They got the reasons, okay? Is what I'm saying. And I'm sure if we were within that circle, we would understand. I'm not saying it's necessarily the best approach to take. But I'm sure they have reasons which go beyond what they're able to tell us. Because if they told us, then it would ruin the reasons for them not calling it a pandemic for so long. Even though I've talked about why they're not calling it a pandemic for months. Anyways, guys, I really hope that you're all staying safe out there. I'm doing my absolute best to get your orders for your protective equipment out as soon as possible. And we also have the Mira Safety Company who is still in manufacturing. They're delivering stuff four to six weeks out. I'll post a link in the description if you want to get uh, gear through them. Because I do think this is going to get bad. I mean, I haven't even commented in this video about the possible health ramifications of all of this. But there's a good chance that a lot of people are going to die, unfortunately. And that's not nothing to be taken lightly. You know, these are people in our lives, people you know could potentially fall victim to this virus. And that's very serious. It's not a movie. This is real life. So you need to take precautions. Anyways, guys, uh, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video, whatever that means at this point. And stay tuned. Tomorrow I'm going to have more upbeat, practical video for you. I promise. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.